everyone. Welcome back to another episode of JRC TV. This week we are focused on health and our body, specifically how to get our body to its optimum presence and optimum abilities. We have a very special guest. Her name is Krista. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Um, we're going to do your official intro so people know how awesome you are. Uh, let, let's say. Krista is a clinical and holistic nutritionist. She's the founder of thewholejourney.com. She has nine years of private practice experience. Krista helps people heal and thrive by identifying the root cause of health issues. She then teaches them how to use food as medicine to heal and thrive so that they can live a vibrant life. Uh, she's also author of two cookbooks and a fertility book. She's San Diego Fox 5 nutrition expert as well as a co-host of a nationally syndicated talk show called The Randy and Krista Show news that makes you healthier. So please, I know you're sitting at home watching this, giving her a huge round of applause as she welcomes us on the show today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, My pleasure. What I would love to do is I love official bios, and I also love people to give a little bit about their history and background, just a short synopsis so people get a feel of who you are and how you got into this. I love that you asked that because so many, so many of us in this field, something happened to get us in this direction. And I was in international business before this field, and uh, never quite felt well. You know, I was raised on I always say pizza, pasta, and antibiotics, and so I never really felt well. But I was I generally looked healthy, and then I took a workshop that changed my life completely. I think we all have those life's aha moments. And I realized the power of food to control your health and your experience of life and your energy levels. And when you can really get that down, that's when you can thrive and really build something and live your passion. So I had kind of one of life's defining moments about 10 years ago and, and switched my field completely because I felt like I had found my life's work because it had such a profound impact on my experience of life. Very cool. And I'm, I'm curious. In that moment when you had just the transition and that thought hit you, how did you make the transition? It's a, it's a question that's not quite on the topic of today, but there's a lot of people listening who are in that position, who they've got a sample of what they really want, they've tasted what they really want, they might have had a sample, or they're just scared and they're not sure, you know, oh man, I'd love to do that, but, uh, geez, I don't know how to do it or I don't know where to go. So you were in business and you got a sample of this and life kind of gave you a new direction. What did you do to make that full transition? That, that is a great question because it is hard and it takes a lot of courage to shift. But I, uh, one of my friends, you know, sometimes someone says something and it, it's just, it, it's the straw that broke the camel's back, it tips it. And she said, when the pain outweighs the fear, you make the change. And I was sitting at my desk and working a corporate job and I kind of felt like my potential or what I really knew I could do in the world was just sitting on my desk, uh, you know, staring back at me and I needed to do this. And so you have to take the leap of faith and so I go through that period where I was going to school, I was building a practice on nights and weekends, and I knew that my life was going to be out of balance for a while because I was still working full time. And uh, then you just slowly start to build. And I think being an entrepreneur is a very spiritual journey because you have to move past a lot of fear and roadblocks and, and really step into your power and do things that are hard and meet these challenges. And the more you meet them, the more they go away. And the more you just step into what you feel, that power of who you really are and what you really want to be doing. And so for me, I did it slowly. Then I built my practice, and then I let go of my full-time job and got some consulting work until I built it to the point where I didn't need that. I never wanted it to be about the money, and so I always had something else that I could rely on for that because this was my passion project until that just happened, and then I could let go and, and be 100% with my business. Very cool. Very cool. And for those, you mentioned a few things there. There's tons of roadblocks. There's tons of late nights. There's tons of early mornings. There's tons of times when you're like, ah, stress is going off the chart. And you don't know what you're going to do or how you're going to make it. Yeah. How do you keep your health at its absolute best during these times? Because we hear stuff on TV that's like, if you just do this juice cleanse or this, this detox or this water with lemon and something else or... They, you have all these magic pills that are supposed to just energize your body and make you look good. But what, what do we need to focus on to make sure our body is actually its healthiest while going through these times? 
I think that is so important because it's so easy to get burnt out, especially as an entrepreneur, and you have to take good care of your adrenal glands. And those that's the gas tank of the human body. And then there's stages and phases to what's called adrenal fatigue, where you start to get depleted, and then you get to this point of no return where you think, what happened to my drive and motivation? And that can happen quickly. And so with adrenal fatigue, you want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Well, there's no panacea, Derek. Like you said, not this magic pill or this powder. It's a lifestyle that you have to embrace. And you can't really, we're going to talk about cleansing today, and you can't over-rely. I think what happens when life gets really busy, we start to say, oh, I'll just have another cup of coffee. I'm tired. My body really needs to rest or it needs a nourishing meal. But I'm going to have coffee and push through, and then that becomes our lifestyle, or we have sugar, or we have just whatever these quick, convenient foods are that aren't nourishing, and we start shifting our biochemistry in the wrong direction, and it becomes this whirlpool that's you know self-propelling. And so cleansing is really important, but cleansing while you're also nourishing the body is very important. Hold on one second. We have technical difficulties. Oh, okay. Let's start. Okay, so let's start back with if you if you want to start cleansing or take care of yourself. Did you get the part of you know not relying on sugar and alcohol and caffeine for your energy as life starts turning up the heat? Yes, we were just talking about that. You were saying okay. So that's the that's the biochemical cycle that can really you know ensue for years, and it's hard to break. And you need this whole almost transformation or intervention to get out of that cycle. But if you can cleanse and you can give your body, let's say ten days twice a year, where you're cleansing and you're getting away from those things, those are probably the five things if you eliminated for at least ten days a year that would give you the biggest shift in your health. So sugar, alcohol, caffeine. Pasteurized dairy and gluten, those five things that would be the first point of cleansing. And then, yeah, getting in, nourishing fruits and vegetables. For me, healthy fats are the most important thing when I'm working with clients is to not be afraid of fat. It will feed your brain, protect your immune system, it's satiating. And so I having people making sure that they're getting coconut oil and I love grass-fed butter or ghee, which if you have a dairy problem, that's clarified butter without the milk solids. Mm -hmm. And avocado and olive oil, getting the good fats in, high quality animal protein, that's really important when you're trying to recover from adrenal fatigue, blood sugar stabilization, and having enough protein from animals that ate clean. So no antibiotics in their feed, they, they pasture raised, you know, whatever they would choose to eat in nature is what they ate. Yep. Um, question, question on that. There's some people listening who are vegetarians or vegan and they've, they've gone the route of, listen, I won't touch anything that's a meat product. I'm not, I, whether I love animals or whether I just don't like meat, they're going mm -hmm. that route. What can they do that might help them in those spaces as well during that time of replenishment, during that time of, of getting their body back up, what could they replace some of those things with just as options? You sure. Think so, ghee is uh, one of them? I'm sorry? You said ghee is one of them? Well, ghee wouldn't be a meat replacement because that's a that's butter. It's clarified butter without the milk solids if you're vegetarian, but that wouldn't work for vegan. Um, if you're vegan, then my favorite protein to use with, for vegans is hemp protein or um, using a combination of hemp and brown rice protein will give you a complex carb and protein. Or we're going to talk about my seven-day cleanse where I have people soak their nuts and seeds before they consume them. Just soak the amount you'll eat the next day. That will make the protein more bioavailable because you'll activate enzymes. And then I like using tempeh with vegetarians or vegans. Do you know what tempeh is? Yep, absolutely. Okay. But I always say no tofu, and that shocks people. But I'm, I'm not a fan of, of um, non-fermented soy in any way, shape, or form because we, we talk a lot in my practice about thyroid function. And so that blocks thyroid function. Just one serving will slow your thyroid down by 7%. And most people are, it's one of the five most common food sensitivities. And so um, that's just one thing that I caution vegans and vegetarians away from is tofu and soy milk. There's so many other healthy foods to eat. Gotcha. Interesting. Very cool. So we're, we're cutting out some of these things. We're mm -hmm. replenishing our body. What are some other important factors to consider during this time of replenishing and rejuvenating ourselves? 
Well, you know, we want to definitely get in more veggies. But it depends on where is where is your digestive health. I always say that digestive health is the foundation, the cornerstone of your health. If that's not working, nothing else is going to work. And most issues, whether they be hormonal issues or immune system issues or brain function issues, start in the digestive system. And so if, if you don't have any bloating and you don't struggle with digestion, you can easily do a raw food cleanse and handle that really well. If you have digestive problems, you would do half raw and half cooked because then you can blend your enzymes so that you're actually digesting your food and getting the nutrients from it. So I have this like seven day cleanse that I will put people on and uh, I know you're a big fan of lemon water Derek we always start the day with lemon water and I make sure that people are having about a liter of water for every 50 pounds of body weight so that's kind of your marker and then they're gonna start off and they're gonna have for you're gonna have seven days of raw food and juice and so the first two days are raw then you have three days of juice fasting if you can handle it unless you're in adrenal fatigue then we're gonna add some fat in there and some protein and then two more days of raw food nice so it's a total of seven days split mm -hmm. up in different sequences obviously for your body to be able to go through the different pieces very mm -hmm. cool that's something I believe you gave it to us in PDF so we're gonna have as today's download on on the video if you guys want it on our blog um, Literally, you could grab it right there. We'll have a link for you. You can just download this seven-day cleanse. And what are some of the effects that you see people have when they go through this? Obviously, you've been doing it for a while, so you have lots of people go through it. What, what are the experiences people tell you they experience? I think people feel, I mean, if you need a cleanse and you can muscle through the first couple days of not feeling well, it, that can be transformative in and of itself. And I, I know that you and I have the same belief system. I mean, when you shift your physical health, Obviously, it, 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 it's monumental for your mental and emotional health, and then it frees up your creative capacity for what you can do in the world. And so people who have had chronic headaches for years, that they go away. You know, energy is lifted. There's this glow around your skin and just sleeping so much better. Digestive problems go away. And so... Doing a cleanse a couple times a year is one of the best things you can do. It's just like how we change the oil in our car, you know, and then the car functions better. And we have to we have to think like that. And so I always have people think of eating for nourishment and to fill in nutritional deficiencies, because that's a big problem today, as well as for cleansing on a daily basis. And usually cleanse is enough to shift the whirlpool. If you're in a negative, if you're in a negative flow, and a cleanse is enough to shift it back in the positive flow to where you can live that lifestyle instead of trying so hard to live it. Very cool. I love that. So if you're out there listening, you're an entrepreneur, you're, you're at a corporate office, you're working, 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 you're feeling a little burnt out and you feel like maybe it's your motivation that's lacking, maybe it's your drive, maybe it was you know, your reason, your big why that's, that's fading because you just don't have the energy like you used to to follow your dreams and goals. This is something for you where you might want to think about taking this seven day cleanse going through it, rejuvenating your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, bringing yourself back to life, then testing your big why and all the other mental and emotional reasons to make sure that it just wasn't your body burning out. <laughs> this would be a great thing to, to tap in and do. So we're going to give you that cleanse today. Um, and for our people who are listening in, if there's any other just real big advice you'd give them as far as understanding their health, what's a core belief that they might want to carry with them about their mind, their body, their spirit that might help them transition. Because there's a lot of people I know who have met who, like you said, they were raised on pots, pasta and pizza and burgers and fast food and, you know, the cheapest, fastest option. Whatever I could grab and eat, that's good enough. And that carries with them into the office where they're sitting at a desk, they're working all day, you know, they get a couple cups of their coffee because it makes them feel a little bit awake so they can work faster. And then they didn't pack a lunch, they don't have anything healthy, so they go to the vending machine to get a snack and... God knows what's in there, <laughs> mm -hmm. but this pattern exists. If they could shift one fundamental belief, in your opinion, mm -hmm. what would you think might help them just better kind of get a whole other perspective on what their body is for and their health? What would you say might be one or two fundamental beliefs they might be able to carry with them that would help them just see it in a whole new way? I always say if you give the body what it needs, you take away what it doesn't need, and it will heal itself. 
And so really believing in the power of the human body and respecting it. I don't think that as a nation we respect our bodies. What it takes for you and I just to be here talking, you know, trillions of cells are communicating. And if we can really respect that, that there's nothing that we have to do to keep our hearts beating or to keep ourselves breathing. And, and if we, the body will respond so well, just make one change. One change. Start your day off with 16 ounces of room temperature water with the juice of half a lemon. That's all you have to do instead of with, with a cup of coffee. Do that for two weeks until it becomes just natural in what you normally do. And you'll see that you feel better and then you build off of it. We, we always talk about slowly upgrading and you don't, I think that's what happens people try to make such a huge change all at once and it's too hard and they give up and they go right back to it. But that belief is that, I mean, if we don't have our health, we really don't have anything. We can't create anything in the world. We can't give anything to anyone else. And so we only really start to focus on it when it goes away. So if we can nurture and nourish ourselves and believe that we're worth it and physical health is the basis for everything else that we create in the world, that's the belief that will have you making better, more positive choices You know, out of loving yourself and wanting to self-actualize. Very cool. I dig that. So, we have a seven-day cleanse for you if you're watching this. We have tons of insights, a great mental shift as far as realizing that if you don't have your body, you don't have anything. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how famous you are, how many people you touch, how many companies you start. It will all be gone if you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> and especially your family, the people you care about. You want to be there for your kids. You want to be there for the one you love. You want to be there to connect with all those people over the years. You need yourself, your mind, your body, your emotions functioning at its best. In yeah. saying that, I want to say thank you so much for joining us, and I also want to say for people who are listening in and they want to get to know more about you, you're in my hometown of San Diego. I grew up there. I lived there most of my life, but if yeah. they want to get to know more about you, how do they do so? You can find everything you need to know about me and my work at thewholejourney.com, and so I have lots of videos there. If this information resonates, there's lots of five-minute clips that you can watch on almost any health topic. Very cool. So thewholejourney.com. You got it. Perfect. And we will have that up as a link so you can use that from our email or from our blog to send you right back over there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us and sharing so much great insight and strategy with us as well as that cleanse. So we'll make sure everyone gets a copy of that as well so they can go through it. Perfect. And hopefully we can have you on again and, and take this a little bit deeper in the future. I love it. Let's do it. Thanks for having me, Derek. You're welcome. Until <laughs> next week, I hope everyone watching has an amazing week and an incredible day. See you guys soon.